Hi, my name is Sydney and I'm here with Carla Ricci, who has been an interior designer here with Madame McFarland for 15 years. She's going to tell us a little bit about how to accessorize a coffee table. Just a reminder that all items on the floor are available for purchase and new items are brought in every week to keep things up to date. Okay, I thought today, Sydney, I could give you just a few ideas on how to accessorize a cocktail table using a few simple ideas of um, suggestions to put it together where it complements the space and the tabletop. I like to first think about what's happening in the room. Is the room formal, uh, sophisticated, or casual? And using color is a good way to help um, identify what pieces to use on the coffee table. One or two colors for something more formal, three or more colors if you're wanting to do something more casual. And I like to use the rule of three. So in height, if you're high, medium, low, and in the way of objects or forms, three again, an odd number is always more pleasing to the eye than something that is an even number. So another thing to think about is using sculptural pieces, things that have texture to them. Um, and if you want to personalize by putting books or a treasured item on the tabletop as well is another good way to create that look. So here's an example of using, if you had fresh flowers, fresh flowers, we've got just a couple of things going on in the way of color. So this would in itself lend to being a more formal tabletop. I want to keep it simple for you so that you can take these ideas home and, and help to create a beautiful focal point in your own room. Carly gave us some great ideas about how to accessorize a coffee table. Now we're going to talk to Pat about how to hang artwork. Not only can a good interior designer make your space and your home look beautiful, but they can also save some arguments and fighting among the spouses. One of the funniest things to do is go into a client's home and look how high the artwork is hung above the crown molding, meaning that the husband probably hung the artwork and the wife never knows how to address the problem. So here are just a few quick tips on how to hang art appropriately for your home. And it's very simple and much easier than most people make it. So real, quick, real quickly, the easiest way to hang a piece of art, especially if it's wired, is just to measure you have 21 inches. You want to hang most pieces about four to six inches above the chest or the sideboard um, or over a, a console in a hallway. So this is a good example of this height. You can see here over the chest you have about four or six inches over the piece. So just measure your wire, it's 21, add five inches to 26 and just merely go up 26 inches over the piece of furniture, okay? And put a little tiny hole in the wall. We don't need huge molly bolts huge holes in the wall to destroy the wall. These little nails right here will hold 50 pounds and hang any artwork appropriately. Okay, so remember where you want to hang the artwork and also visually around the room you want to keep most of the artwork about five feet off the ground. So you want most of the, the body of the work to be about five feet um, high so most people can enjoy viewing it. And here we just talked about hanging one piece. So in a few minutes I'm going to show you how, how to do a large grouping which is also a really great look for the home. Okay, we just finished up with how to hang a piece of artwork above a, soap, above a chest or a console. Um, remember that the four to six inches above the piece of furniture is always a good place to start. Another great look for the home is to do a grouping like I did here. Um, now this might overwhelm a lot of people, but a, great, a couple of good shortcuts to think about is start with your larger piece here, like we did centered above the sofa. And a great thing to do is just put these on the floor, literally put them on the floor and kind of place them, place them around on the floor and then kind of bring that up onto the wall. So again, you start with one, a focal point here in the middle, which is usually a little bit larger in scale, and then kind of build like a Christmas tree. So you have the larger base here, and you can bring some length up to extend the horizontal and the vertical line um, with, a, with a taller ceiling. And then you really just kind of play with balance. You have a larger one over here, mixed with a thin one over here with a taller one above it. There's really no right or wrong. It's usually just a sense of balance. So you have a couple of small ones on the corners to kind of bring the anchors in on both sides. You have a little bit more weight over here, but again, you have three pictures over here with one large one here. So it's really just a process of working on the balance, spacing the things is really important, but you also want to make the, the lines not all match or it's going to look like you tried to match. So make it a little bit more organic where there's a little bit different spacing between the pictures. It's just a lot of visual um, interest uh, to the wall. It's great for a large wall like this, perhaps even in a landing on the upstairs with family photos and things like that. So. Again, have some fun with it, make it organic. There's really no right or wrong, but just work on the balance and kind of working out from there. Hope you have all learned some valuable tips from Pat and Carla. Come on out to 135th and State Line from Monday to Saturday and look at all the wonderful furniture you can use for your home.